Hi, I'm Warwick Hayes, long time After Effects user and featured content creator and developer for Reillusion with Cartoon Animator. I'm going to run you through my workflow for creating a, a small little animation using some of the, the key and best features with Cartoon Animator 4 and using their bridge plugin uh, to be able to take that whole scene across to After Effects and add in some of the some of the bells and whistles that we can do with After Effects, just to make life easier. Before we jump into the tutorial, I just wanted to take a moment to show you my content store on the Reillusion website. I've got backgrounds, characters, props, with a large range of different themes, and I'm always adding new content. I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look. You never know, it might help you get started with your own animation. Now let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so we start off with the basic scene setup. All you have to do is double click or drag and drop the assets from the content manager across onto the stage mode and they'll load in. You'll see majority of the assets are, are set up with uh, Z depth, so each of the layers are separated. The character has a couple of extra accessories. So we go through and turn off the bow tie and the glasses. And then we move on to the basic motion setup. And that's pretty much done the same way. Find the, uh, the motion you need from the content manager, double click and add it into the scene. And then we just have to position the transform so that it matches up with the leg movement of the character. With lip syncing, I like to do that manually. Guys, so awesome, you know that. I'll delete out the automatic lip sync. And then it's just a matter of going through and listening for the main phrases and matching a mouth shape to it. Takes a bit of time, but it's well worth it in the end. And that's just switching between mouth sprites of that character. You, you guys are awesome. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can also edit the character even though it's in the scene already. So for this guy, I wanted to add a microphone to his hand and we can export that across from Cartoon Animator into Photoshop here and then it's a matter of finding a hand that was going to look good with a microphone in it add the microphone and then save and it would sync and link back up with the character that's in Cartoon Animator Now with the perform motion, I found that I needed to add those in down from the animation, delete out the voice and facial clips so that they didn't overwrite the ones I'd already done. And then I just had the, the body motion. And it was a matter of taking the ones that you can see on the right there and linking them up and syncing them into the left so that they played out the way that I wanted them to. top and tailing them and matching them up with the audio. Thank you, thank you everybody. <laughs> you guys are awesome, you know that? Especially the blonde sitting over here. <laughs> Once that's done, the perform motions have their own sprite swapping within it. So I wanted to go through and just change some of those so that it worked better with the acting of the character. So the same thing, just going through step by step and switching out the hand sprites. And then also adjusting the hand position for some of the frames, just so that it tied in better with the motion beforehand or after. Finally with the character, I just wanted to add in a little bit of head movement. It's not too noticeable in the end result, but all of those little things add up to give the, the character a bit more life. So it was just a matter of moving through the scene, moving the gizmo so his head slightly moved when I needed it to.
So with the audience, I dropped in a bunch of my other characters and saved those out as images, just for each row of the seating, and then adjusted their color to black so that it was just the silhouette. So it didn't really matter that they were looking at the camera because now they look like they're looking forward on the stage. I dropped those back into the scene as freebone characters then add a couple of bones just in the head and the neck. Adjusted them back into their position on the seats. And then just went through on the scenes that they were seeing and gave a little bit of head movement here and there. And then the camera adjustment, it's just becoming director for the scene. Going through, switching to close-ups, pulling back out when it needs it. Then we go through with the exporter, the cartoon animator to After Effects exporter, picking the settings that we need. That exports out all of the different layers as an image or as a sequence, if it's an animated character, for example. Then we go through and import them back, import that JSON file, and that'll pull all of those elements back into After Effects and layer the scene and set it up exactly how it was in Cartoon Animator. And we have all of the elements that we can go through and start tweaking in After Effects. start off with some camera depth so we can go through and adjust the aperture on the camera which blurs the whole scene and you'll see when we go to a close-up it's blurred everything out there so by selecting those two layers we can focus it on the character no matter what view we're in and go through and make a, a few color adjustments on the seats just to darken them up and match in with the, the silhouette, making the foreground of the scene look a lot darker, as if it's a theater with the lights down. Now we can focus on the character and add some effects to him. We'll pre-compose him so that we can add the effects without messing up the linking. Go through and add a layer style to start with, the inner glow. Make a few adjustments on that. That just highlights him a little bit on the center once we make those adjustments. All of this is just adding to giving him a bit more of a stage lit look. So the next part adding the light sweep. Go through and make the adjustments there. So basically this is going to give a rim light to the character as if it's being lit from one side. Make the adjustments so that it's just the edge. And then duplicate that and just make a couple of little adjustments just to give a, a, a thinner highlighted edge rather than the thicker one there. And then duplicate all of that once again. And then we just change the angle of the light so that it's coming from the other side. Next is shadow. Duplicate the layer of the character. And we add on the radial shadow. It's working out just which way. It's not going to be real world accurate, but it's going to make the character land in the scene a lot better. Make some adjustments there to match the overall lighting of the scene. Then I added a, a mask to the bottom part just to uh, block it out along the floor.
and then duplicate that shadow layer then add a drop shadow on that layer and this is to give that angled look to the shadow that you'd get where the shadow from his feet goes along the floor and then up along the wall rather than just projecting straight out from his body Then we had the corner pin effect, just to be able to distort that shadow and line it up with the one that's on the wall a little bit better. The final effect was just on the overall scene, adding a vignette just around the edge, just to give those edges a darker look and bring the focal point onto the character in the scene. then we're done. In conclusion you can see just how easy it is now creating an animation using a lot of pre-made assets, uh, motions and some of the key features with Cartoon Animator 4 and then bringing that across into After Effects to finish it off. So why not give it a go yourself.